Hi Reddit Chess. I uh, thought I'd do uh, just a small video covering this game because I think there's some interesting points that could be made from uh, from this example. So the game began by Y playing uh, d4, which is uh, the second most popular move at all levels, uh, as it by d5. And here, uh, something you would normally see would be uh, something like the Queen's game, but declined, which runs like this. Um, c4, e3, e6, developing the knights, the bishops, castling, uh, and uh, creating a battery of uh, queen and bishop. So this would be sort of standard stuff opening uh, that, that you would see in sort of queen's game with decline structure. However, white did not play c4, he played knight f3 like this uh, which is a pretty decent move and uh, black played conservatively uh, safely uh, there's he could also have put a knight into uh, play mirroring, mirroring uh, white's move but playing e6 here is also okay and uh, here we see the first real mistake uh, bishop to g5 um, well it attacks the queen uh, but it's one guy attacking, like, or maybe you could say it's two guys attacking an army of 16, 16 guys just standing here waiting. And these 16 guys outnumber, uh, outnumber these two guys, uh, eight to uh, one. So, uh, so this attack should fail. It's simply too early to be on the uh, offensive. Uh, black simply just uh, attacked the bishop, blocked the attack, and uh, gained the initiative. Some might say that these uh, light squares that I highlighted with yellow here has become weak, uh, resulting from uh, Black's move, moving uh, the pawn to uh, to f6, and uh, that's true in a way. But the fact that <coughs> Black gains a tempo and forces this bishop to move again uh, makes it okay to lose a tempo in in, in this way. Not, not to lose a tempo, but to weaken these uh, squares. So uh, the bishop came back uh, to a bad square for the bishop uh, on uh, e3 it does nothing but uh, uh, prevents the pawn on e2 from moving and when that pawn can't move uh, why it simply makes it hard for himself to develop his game he has he needs to move this uh, pawn so that he can uh, take a claim in the center um, also this bishop has now moved uh, three times and as someone else pointed out you should only move a uh, piece once in the opening because if you move it more than once you simply uh, lose time every time you move that piece you, you could have developed another piece and um, black develops a move but develops a, a knight with a very standard move and uh, here ridiculously white moves his bishop again um, for no reason at all. Wait, maybe he realized that it was not very nicely placed, uh, but still he should have tried to um, uh, to develop some other pieces because now uh, Black really had a chance to just play um, G5 and gain a lot of tempo because look at this. Now the bishop would have to come back and it looks like white has played two moves and black has played five moves. So white has really squandered his opening ad advantage. Uh, the opening advantage being, of course, that he moves first. Time is a crucial factor in uh, chess, and you really, you really need to uh, think about deploying your forces. Uh, the old great, great Jose Raúl Capablanca. Uh, who was a world champion, chess world champion, uh, 
back in the 20s, he said that if he should give uh, short advice about the opening, it would be that the opening was about a rapid and efficient deployment of your forces, which is more or less the opposite of what White has done here. So, um, Black, however, did not seize the opportunity to uh, sort of humiliate White's opening scheme, but instead played uh, B5, pawn to B5 here, which gave White the uh, chance to play uh, E3, uh, opening up an attack from the bishop, f forcing uh, Black to uh, play something like Rook to uh, B7, and uh, White would have regained the initiative. Uh, White, however, uh, did not do that, but instead played Queen to D2, and which somebody else pointed out that, which is very true, that you shouldn't develop your queen so early. And I would like to add that you can develop it early if you got a really good reason. And I mean, like, there should be some forced line where you could win material or uh, gain a tremendous position. But that is re very rarely the case. And in this uh, game, it is not the case at all. Um, Black developed the knight and <laughs> White moved the queen again. Now it has used two moves to get to where it is. And we can really see how... Uh, Black has gained more a, a, a far stronger grip of the board of the position than uh, than White, and already uh, we can say that um, Black has a significant positional advantage. Um, he now attacked the bishop. The bishop dropped back, and uh, so it moved once, twice, thrice. This is, the, this is the fourth move uh, for no real reason. And now it blocks the pawn again. Well, uh, Black put uh, Rook into uh, play to defend uh, the pawn. And um, again, White violated uh, an opening principle and moved the, the knight again. And um, Black did the right thing. Moved the pawn in the center, created tension in the center, attacked the center, saying, Now I want to convert my positional advantage into an, a material advantage that is uh, an advantage that can be counted in who got the most pieces on the board. Well, uh, White played what could have been a decisive mistake, uh, pawn to d3, and uh, the reason is that this allows Black to capitalize on his uh, tremendous positional advantage. Well, he moved the queen out too early. The queen is just hanging out there with nobody to protect her, so she can be kicked around. Uh, and if you look at the board, black dominates more than two thirds of the board, uh, which allows him to just kick the queen around and win material by force from this position. Let me show you how he could have done that. Uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, tricky, uh, but uh, try to follow. First, he should have uh, played bishop to f5, uh, simply attacking the queen. And uh, you can see that I, I colored the squares so that you could see uh, the head, um, how the queen really is uh, in, a, in a tough spot here. It only got three moves uh, available to uh, squares that uh, isn't threatened so and either one will result in uh, some sort of catastrophe for instance it's a b or c so if he will goes to to a on a3 uh well the line would go something like this just takes the bishop would have to move but it really got no squares which would result in the bishop being lost and uh, and White really got nothing as compensation for the lost bishop. So uh, that doesn't work. All right. Uh, if he goes to uh, B uh, on B3, uh, 
we could just kick the queen with the knight. The queen would have to move. And then the other knight would come into the game. And you can see how uh, now the uh, attack from uh, the dark squared bishop has opened up. Forcing the queen to move again. Um, and the queen is running out of squares fast. Um, would have to go to... Uh, uh, to b3 uh, but it would be lost so uh, that won't work either uh, so the last uh, possibility was to go to c3 and uh, this was the best chance uh, to fight uh, but still it loses for instance um, White could just start, black could just start by kicking the queen with the, the pawn. The queen would have to move here, it's the only uh, viable square. And uh, notice that as soon as this knight moves, there will be an attack on the queen. So uh, black could just get the queen up here, defend the knight so that this knight can move uh, without uh, white's queen being able to capture the knight on uh, c6. Then uh, and I, I call it squares again here to see all these red squares are uh, places that the white queen also this one really can't go. So it's running out of the squares fast again. Here, um, this playing C4 is white's only uh, only option to try to stay in the game. Uh, now, uh, if this knight moves. Uh, White could capture uh, the pawn here and uh, have a defended queen, but of course uh, Black's not interested in this. He'll just uh, attack that square once more, and the line would go takes and just takes. Now the rook is attacked. The rook would have to move. Then uh, we could capture uh, with uh, e takes d, and now we got a sort of ghost of a variation uh, from earlier on where this bishop had nowhere to go and again it is trapped and will be lost uh, and black would have gained a significant material advantage um, so he would have uh, succeeded in converting his positional advantage into a uh, uh, material advantage yeah and uh, so fortunately for white um, black did not find the move bishop to um, to f5 and uh, he really he should have because he should have taken a look at the board to, said to himself all right white has violated these opening principles his queen is out there I control the board how can I use this? How can I kick the queen? How can I sort of just attack? Because when you got a uh, positional advantage, you got the initiative, and then, uh, as Capablanca said, the, the player with the initiative is obliged to attack. He needs to attack, otherwise he will lose his initiative. Um, well, <coughs> Black did not do this. He played knights to f5 uh, uh, which uh, allows gives a uh, wide breathing room so um, white then play bishop takes uh, g5 which is sort of pointless it's a it's one of the worst possible moves in the position because black will just recapture the pawn and uh, but the bishop and white would have gained absolutely nothing from this. Um, instead, white should have looked at his uh, pieces and said, all right, this one isn't doing anything, this one isn't doing anything, this one isn't doing anything, and this one isn't doing anything. So he should have tried something like moving the bishop up here, moving the knight up here, getting ready to castle, that sort of stuff. Developing his game somehow, some way, because this idea of just 
taking simply does not work. Um, the black player is now has now a material advantage, marked material advantage, sorry, and a positional advantage as well, which would be enough uh, for most uh, experienced players to uh, to win. Uh, a game, even against very strong opposition. Um, the queen was kicked, uh, moved for God knows how many times, and um, here um, Black played c6, but he could have just kicked the queen even more, moving here, which would have resulted in a variation that goes like this. Queen would have to move, and uh, Black could now play uh, c5, defending the knight, which would uh, result in not just a domineer, dominating uh, positional and material advantage, but uh, a, a positional advantage that is winning by force. If you look at this, uh, it's clear to anybody that while really hasn't got much to work with. All the green squares are controlled by black. Uh, black is violating um, white's territory uh, and black and white really hasn't developed anything. And the only piece actually developed is the queen, which is the only piece that you would not want to develop before developing the, uh, the other pieces. Um, well, Instead, uh, Jeff Black just played uh, weaker move c6, uh, retaining his uh, uh, material advantage, um, but not really capitalizing as fast as he could have. Um, fortunately, for, fortunately for him, uh, White kept giving him chances to do so, so he could have done it even now. Um, he did not, he just moved the attack knight, but he could have played this move, which would have resulted in the same position. Um, well, he didn't, he just uh, played, moved the knight, and after some exchanges, uh, which benefit white, for instance, uh, not for instance, but uh, actually ben benefits white, because um, attack at the, um, exchanging a attacking piece that was the black knight for a defending piece makes it easier for white to defend. Uh, the queen moves, it was attacked, and uh, now it attacks the rook, but it could easily have been defended by the uh, the bishop. Bishop just to move to uh, to g7, that would be defended by the knight. It would attack the queen, uh, no problems at all. And I'm not sure why. Why Black did not uh, do this? Uh, instead, he he gave White a chance to complicate the game and get back into the game, maybe. Uh, and really, you shouldn't do that unless it's necessary. Um, well, he played Queen up here, uh, attacking uh, White's rook. But after this series here, uh, White had, uh, they, well, they exchanged equal amount of pieces, which should benefit Black since he uh, already has is in the lead. But White had the, the, the possibility of playing Queen up here, uh, attacking the King and the Rook. And even though it would not be wise to actually capture the Rook because uh, it would lose time, um, it, it nevertheless it gave white uh, a chance to uh, to get back into the game uh, white did not do this white just played takes which allowed uh, the uh, knight as you can see I, uh, I drew an arrow um, to to go here <laughs> and it would be checkmate very soon because uh, the uh, the knight and the queen co coordinating with the least the lethal attack against uh, the queen. Uh, king, I mean.
uh, black played bishop up here, uh, thinking that he uh, needed more uh, firepower in the attack, but actually the knight was enough. This move is a bit too slow and gave uh, black the chance, white the chance to uh, defend his bishop with uh, the knight. And uh, now black's advantage actually is not that great. It's before it was worth about five pawns, which was easily winning. Uh, now it's only worth about one pawn, according to my analytical assistant Ripka and Houdini. I ran it through both engines. Um, here white, here now black played uh, uh, the move knight to uh, e3, but it's one move too late. And now uh, uh, we could have seen something like, we saw this move, but we could have seen something like check, check, check. And now the bishop would have to drop back and the attack would have been um, squandered somehow. The advantage of the attack would have been squandered somehow. Um, well, uh, white plays just uh, takes, uh, and which allows this knight, nice move. And I imagine that uh, black had uh, some sort of uh, sly smile when playing this move because it looks quite artistic. Uh, check, uh, of course, the knight cannot be captured because uh, that would result in a check from uh, the queen. So the king has to move, and then there's the check again. The king moves again, and uh, and black just captures uh, the free piece. Uh, and now white really, <laughs> really is in, in trouble. He played check, then check, and then uh, the bishop dropped back. Um, there's check here, king moved here, check, and this check was one check too much because now uh, the queen is simply parked all the way away from the action and cannot help defend the king. So uh, after blocking the check, this move was played, which allows checkmate in seven moves goes uh, like this. Check, check uh, not check, but threatening a discovered check, and um, check, 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 checkmate. Uh, that's a forced sequence that would have won the game. Uh, instead, um, Instead, black played rook over here, which allowed check and uh, check, but that's sort of a desperate move here. Uh, white really has no chance of winning. It's just a matter of how long, how much time uh, black will use so to checkmate. So check just takes, and this move doesn't really help because there's just check here and then checkmate. So uh, black won deservedly, uh, although he missed some uh, opportunities and possibilities here and there, and uh, some of them were admittedly quite uh, advanced or hard to find variations. Um, he, uh, he, he capitalized on uh, white's uh, uh, when white, white violated the uh, opening principles, moving the same pieces twice, not developing the pieces, moving the queen out too early, not fighting for the center, not fighting for control over the board. And uh, uh, so uh, I think it was uh, 
a pretty decent game from uh, Black's point of view, and I think that uh, White maybe should uh, try to learn a little bit more about uh, general principles in chess. And uh, I think it was fun to, uh, to look at the game, and I hope you could take something away from it. Have a nice day, Reddit.